northbound on North Carolina State Road 17. I was beating a path towards the Marine Corps' Camp Lejeune outside of Jacksonville, which was allegedly sending out a military train on this date. After arriving, I waited for a good bit as more rail fans gathered round in anticipation. We were all eventually rewarded as NS train P-29 emerged from base and into the public just after 2 p.m. P-29 is a weekday local coming out of New Bern, North Carolina for the state port at Moorhead City, running along Norfolk Southern's EC line. On very, very select occasions, the local will instead veer southwest at Havelock and run the CL line towards Camp Lejeune. When it was learned that P-29 had turned onto the CL line earlier this morning, a decent amount of coastal Carolinian rail fans, including myself, came out of the woodwork to partake in the fun. Today's line to Camp Lejeune is not what it used to be, only seeing about one round trip every three months, so a movement of this magnitude was definitely worth observing. While waiting for P-29, I was told tales of a different CL line back in the 90s when Lejeune was steam heated and there were regular 80-car coal trains powered by Conrail SD-80 Max. Ah, if these rails could talk. This particular section of track won't be talking for much longer though, as the bridge spanning the White Oak River in Stella is scheduled for an 11-month-long total replacement quite possibly making P-29 the last train to ever cross the original structure. P-29's 26 loaded military flats were destined for Blount Island in Jacksonville, Florida for Marine Corps training purposes, but a combing over of the island on Google Maps leads me to believe otherwise. First, Blount Island is home to a naval base, and I'm unsure as to what purpose this equipment would serve the Navy. Second, there does not appear to be any actual base on Blount Island. It pretty much looks like a land-to-sea terminal, which is why I'm wagering a guess that these heavy vehicles are destined for overseas. But this is all conjecture, as I am nothing more than a meager rail fan. What I found kind of funny about this train is that its origin and destination cities are both Jacksonville, just four states apart. The loads were going nowhere anytime soon, though, as the crew of P-29 eased their train over the World War II era bridge. It's kind of easy to see why a replacement is scheduled, and makes me wonder if Norfolk Southern anticipates a rise in traffic over the CL line in the coming years. Still pushing along the government-owned track to Lejeune, we were snagged by P-29 somewhere outside the Croatan National Forest. The rail fan caravan was now fully underway, and it seemed as if these guys wanted to join in on the fun. Pushing through the beautiful Croatan Forest, we came out on the other end at Havelock Junction, just as P-29 was doing the same. The conductor had to hop out in order to throw the switch onto the EC line, which barely allowed me enough time to relocate a couple dozen yards up the tracks. Norfolk Southern SD-70 ACE number 1211 is one of only 50 that NS doesn't actually classify as an SD-70 ACE, and here's why. 
EMD and GE locomotives differ in many ways, one of which is the number of inverters each company traditionally places on its locomotives. An inverter, in essence, controls the power passing through itself and helps the train smoothly speed up and slow down. GE likes to produce one inverter per axle and EMD one per truck. With NS Aces numbers 1175 through 1224, EMD departed from their usual ways and installed one inverter per axle, leading Norfolk Southern to classify these 50 units as SD70I ACs. The oddball leader on the point of today's military consist was more than enough to get me trackside on a Class 1, something I usually avoid in favor of unique short lines. It's not quite the PSR Class 1 we know and love though, as this is dark territory where it's easier for the engineer to shove back to retrieve the conductor rather than making him walk up to the cab. The brief stop before shoving allowed me a moment to examine the AM General Humvees a little closer. The high-mobility, multi-purposed wheeled vehicle, or Humvee, has been a staple within the American military for decades. AM General also makes the civilian Hummer, but has given marketing and sales responsibilities to GMC because, well, they clearly have bigger fish to fry with the armed forces. While P-29 was shoving back, the rain picked up a bit, so I placed my camera under shelter in the trunk just in time for the two huge HEMTTs to roll by, perhaps my favorite pieces of equipment on this train. Produced by Oshkosh Defense, the heavy, expanded mobility tactical trucks are absolute brutes worth over a quarter million each. These aren't the only Oshkosh monsters on today's train. Three MTVRs, or medium tactical vehicle replacements, were on the head end with one more near the HEMTTs. These are cool because all MTVR variants share a common chassis, which allows for multiple uses when in action. But enough nerding out about the equipment, it was time for P-29 to get back underway, finally off the rusty old CL trackage. It was a quick roll-by here at Havelock. We had to break off in order to get to our next spot with plenty of time. This is near James City, a location picked out in order to see P-29 at the track speed of 25 miles an hour. With four MTVRs, 14 armored front end loaders and forklifts, two HEMTTs, and 56 Humvees, I'm thinking Camp Lejeune put about 18 or 20 million dollars worth of equipment on P-29, definitely one of the most expensive trains I've ever seen. It was a pretty quick jump from here to New Bern, possible because of Norfolk Southern's 5 mile an hour speed restriction over the town's drawbridge. Pulling into NB, I happily found a spot I'd had on my list ever since starting school in North Carolina, street running through downtown. But alas, I quickly learned that the dispatcher was holding P-29 just shy of the drawbridge for a crew change, 
while P-98 was coming into the new burn yard from the west. So I did what any other rail fan would do, got some nutrition, and relocated. This is at Racetrack Road, one of the first crossings on the west side of the yard in New Bern. It was an SD70 type of day. Even cooler was the Long Hood Forward, or LHF running, something I don't think I've ever seen on a mainline train. But then again, P-98 isn't necessarily a road train, it's part of Norfolk Southern's Eastern Carolina Business Unit and the ECBU's Tandem Locals. This is a daily Selma to New Bern turn, bringing in goods for about two or three other locals based out of NB, including P-29. The power for P-98 comes off of Road Train 350 into Selma, but that would mean the Ace led 350 LHF, and I just can't see that happening. My guess is that Selma tacked the Ace onto P-98 in order to replace the 1211 out of New Bern, which was now bound for Jacksonville. As P-98 quickly made its way towards the yard, P-29's crew was anxious to get underway. We excitedly moved back to downtown where I finally got what I had been wanting for so long, street running. I can't think of a better train to satisfy my desire for a street running scene than loaded military flats headed up by an NS Ace. With a new crew came a new symbol, Norfolk Southern Train 052, New Bern, North Carolina to Simpson Yard in Jacksonville, Florida. The day's chase had provided me with a lot of cool first or second time experiences, such as chasing a military train, rail fanning the line to Camp Lejeune, a long hood forward ace, and an awesome street running scene. I figured this was the perfect way to end an exciting day trackside, especially with the two-hour drive back to Wilmington. Thanks for railfanning with me today. I hope you had as much fun on today's expedition as I did.